When you know what size tanker is required from the tank size calculation, there are then several options available and many different shapes and options to suit different specific requirements when it comes to choosing your tank. One first important consideration is the groundwater level on the sites that you're going to be installing the system in. So how high is the water table underneath the ground? There are several low profile tank options specifically manufactured for this reason and application, which can be completely submerged in groundwater and still work and can still be guaranteed by manufacturers to stay in the ground, even though the pressure of the groundwater surrounding the tank in the wrong situation with the wrong tank could cause the tank to pop out of the ground. When tanks are installed in groundwater, they normally have some holes going through the tank vertically and they are normally surrounded by gravel so that the groundwater can surround the tank and pass up through it and not build up pressure from underneath and around the sides with pushes against the tank causing it to go upwards. When the groundwater tail is high, it's important to design the drainage around the tank to try and remove groundwater from being immediately around the tank if possible. And often perforated pipe is used for this in a circular position around the tank to collect it. The groundwater that goes into the pipe and is taken away from either to the nearest drainage point or somewhere ideally several meters away from the tank where the flow of water can be directed away from the tank to reduce any risk of buildup of water immediately surrounding the tank. Another important consideration is whether the rainwater harvesting tank you choose requires a concrete backfill or a granular gravel backfill. Sometimes this depends on the type of tank or the depth in which the tank is being installed. And it can depend on the loading which is going to be imposed on top of the tank. So if it was going to be installed in a driveway or access road or car park on certain developments or whether it's just going to be in the garden, these things need to be considered. Tanks that require a concrete surround will take longer to install and often installation costs are more expensive due to this additional time and due to the cost of the concrete in the first place. Tanks that require a gravel surround can generally be installed within a day and a half or even a day, depending on the size of the tank and whether or not you have all the equipment available at the right time. But because the gravel can be simply backfilled and compacted in layers, as you go up, you don't have to wait for the concrete to go off and set, and it's a much quicker installation process. It's important though that installation instructions are followed so that manufacturer's warranties will still be in place once the tank has been installed. Before we move away from groundwater, some cylindrical tanks that go deeper in the ground are typically groundwater stable up to the halfway point of the tank. So even if the groundwater is a meter and a half to two meters below the surface, it's still important to consider which tank is suitable in this scenario. There are many low profile tanks available now, which are shallow tanks that only require a meter to a meter depth total excavation depth. These will always assist with high groundwater table installations, but it's still important to check where the groundwater level can come up to when installing these shallow tanks, because different manufacturers will have different stipulations. Another important consideration on the type of tank is whether the filter is internal part of the tank or whether it doesn't go in the tank at all and it's a pre-tank filter. If it's a pre-tank filter, that means you're going to have two access covers, two manhole lids in your garden or in your driveway, and you need to think about the position of these. If the filter is inside the tank, it keeps everything in the same place. And you've got one lock on top of which should always be a child-proof lock. Accessing the tank means you can get to the filter. You can check the pump if it's a submersible pump system or check the pipe work if it's an internal pump system in the house, which is drawing water from the tank inside. So check what type of filter package fits inside the tank and whether it's manufactured by the same company. If it is, these are often made to suit each other and the dimensions of the filter will match the tank and there will be installation instructions on how these go together. If it's a company that's using one tank from one manufacturer and a filter from another, check that these go well together and that they fit because they won't have been designed in the same way. It's important that you look into which parts and which products are matched with one another to make sure the system works as a whole. When backfilling a tank, which does require a gravel surround or even a concrete surround, it's important with most tanks to fill them with water inside the tank before backfilling. Most manufacturers in our experience would suggest that this is done in layers. So you would fill the tank with approximately 300 mil depth of water in the side of the tank, then surround it with 300 mil depth of gravel at the base of the excavation. Then fill a further 300 mil of water inside the tank, then again with a free, further 300 mil of gravel on the outside of the tank and simply keep going incrementally in this manner until you have a tank completely full of water and completely backfilled. 
Again, it should stipulate that this in the manufacturer's instructions, but these are important aspects to prevent any future issues with tanks, which are really the main part of the system, which is difficult to assess and amend once installed. One of the most important things to do with the tank on any rainwater harvesting installation, one of the top tips from this part of the video is to keep the tank as clean as possible during the installation process. It's important that whoever is installing the tank whether it's yourself, a builder, or a groundwork contractor, that they realize this is a rainwater harvesting tank, not a septic tank or a treatment plant. And as such, the cleanliness inside the tank is of paramount importance because when it is filled with water, this water is going to be used for your washing machine, flushing your toilets, or your outside tap. And the water quality needs to be as clean as possible. So if any dirt or soil, bits of gravel or stone, find their way into the tank during the insulation process because the access points have not been covered or people aren't very careful with what goes into the tank, then this will have a detrimental effect on the whole rainwater harvesting system once it's been installed. It will invariably mean that the tank has to be completely cleaned out as soon as it starts to be used, the water collected will be dirty, then there may be some buildup of mud at the bottom of the tank and it will all have to be cleaned out to prevent a negative effect on the system from day one. So, it's important that the tank is installed with access covered or the lid temporarily already on. But mainly the people doing the installation are made aware that this is a rainwater harvesting system and to be careful what goes in the tank. This is a challenging part of any installation process because you are digging a hole in the ground and building sites obviously full of mud, soil, dirt and gravel and can often be wet and rainy and it's challenging to make sure tank stays clean, but it is very important. When choosing the type of tank, you also have to decide what type of lid you require on top of the tank. On most tanks, you'll have two options. The standard lid will be a pedestrian loading lid, which will be suitable for insulation in a garden. This will only take pedestrians walking over it and must not be used in any driveway or roads where any heavy loads can go on top of the tank. The second choice will be some form of a driveway loading lid. These are usually cast iron and will take a light traffic load, so typically a car or a van, which is suitable for a driveway on a domestic property. If the tank is being installed in an access road or in a commercial property where uh, heavy lorries and heavy good vehicles may pass over it, then this must be considered to ensure that the lid is suitable and the underground tank is capable of withstanding the load of the weight above it. 